As you can see, I'm under the car. Excuse that annoying ass train as always, making a guest appearance. Here's the drive line. I got it. I'm in Stockton, but I got it made in the Bay Area, man. This guy gave me a hell of a fucking deal on it. 1350 U joints. Um, just a stock 8.8 .8 flange, I guess. Maybe 1350, I don't know. I told him the exact length that I needed. Um, <clears throat> he made it for me same day, no deposit, nothing. So I went out the same day, he told me it was ready, and I paid for it. I believe it was 550. 550 bucks. You can't even get an aluminum driveline for a stock S197 6R80 car for that much. So, aluminum driveline, lifetime warranty, uh, free balances for the for the time I own it. This shit is fucking nice, man. The way it works, I guess, I was kind of, you know, what would you say, skeptical about it. I didn't know how, where the, since it has no slip yoke, like, where the fuck is, where is it going to give you play for, like, it coming in and out? But it's in here. Gives you, like, an inch and a half of play. But I've already mocked it up. Any includes hardware with it. OEM Ford hardware. So, I've already mocked it up, and it fits perfect. Um, still gives you adjustability, or still gives you, like, some space for adjustability with the pinion angle. Um, here's underneath the car. I got a baseline. Relocated upper, solid, all that shit. I don't have coilovers or nothing. Now, like I said, I wanted a comfortable street car. Just cut V8 springs in the back. Torque box is welded. Subframe connectors I finally got. Um, my boy in uh, from a 650 Motorsports. Small little shop. Guy runs it on his own. Motherfucker gets down, man. Uh, hit him up on IG if you need any type of welding, fabrication, anything. Wiring, swaps, LS, Coyote. It's a six, the number spelled out, five zero motorsports. But anyway, here's some more shit. <clears throat> Got this mounted up and shit. Um, it's actually pretty simple. I was kind of worried about that shit, but it drills through the subframe of the car. You don't need the subframe connectors to have it. It drills through the top of the car. One of them was kind of in the way, so I did that for now. I'll probably put some washers underneath it or maybe grind it down or something so it'll sit flush. But that's because I already have Maxim Motorsport subframe connectors. Sorry for the shitty quality, man. I'm trying to get down and dirty. And this motherfucker, this is what I'm using. This is a SN95 uh, cable. Obviously, it's going to have to come up out the way. I probably should have ran it over the cross member before I put it in. Tucked it away. <clears throat> but that's what it is for now. Um, 6R80 out of an F150. Here's some of the things I was talking about grinded this down a bit to make this sit flush i cut this obviously only one bolt mounting it is still fine it ain't gonna go nowhere um i'm pretty sure this is not the way to run it but this is the way i ran it and it's the way it works i'll try to get you a better view of it that is from power by the hour it's supposed to stop it to where you can leave it in sport mode or maybe you can put it to stop it to where you only get to the d on the shifter and that's uh that's where it is. You don't want to pull it all the way back and all the way down to like first or whatever, but it's supposed to stop it. It works. Um, that's there, little bracket. Also, let me see if I can get a screenshot of it. No. Well, that little bracket up there, that's theirs as well. This I got from Performance Automatic. Had a shitload of issues with it. This is the third one I have. According to them, um, it's supposed to only thread in one or two times. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not too familiar with AN lines and whatnot, but suppose it's only supposed to thread in once or twice. Um, tighten it down, and you shouldn't have to move it again. Because if I, well, the first time, the first one I had, I did move it again, and it stripped out all the threads, pulled them out. I don't know. We'll see if it leaks. If it doesn't leak, then fine. And then it, I don't know, man. It, it moves right there. These little things, like it doesn't has a little bit of yeah i've tightened it down all the way i mean maybe bend it down a little bit to where it'll actually uh hold them down without moving but i don't know i gotta ask him about that too cook's headers um again you can move these in or out or wherever which way you want them i faced them out because otherwise i'd hit the transmission sorry for the shaky video man i'm on my fucking back this shit hurts facing out um i have the bbk extensions and they're more than enough to move them up and out of the way. What else? What else? What else? Um, trans cooler lines. I'll show you where I mounted the trans cooler right now. I had to take off the intake manifold because uh, I was missing 
three bolts on the bell housing. I, my boy had to order them from Ford. I finally got them. I always, only want to run OEM shit when it comes to shit like that. So there's that starter up and out of the way. Secure up and out of the way. Starter wire, I mean, obviously. Look at the clearance on this thing, man. Again, sorry for the shaky video, man. Bear with me. I don't got a lift or none of that shit. Look at that clearance. No issues whatsoever with the Cook's headers. God damn it, I zoomed in. How do I zoom out? There it goes. I have absolutely zero complaints about the Cook's headers, man. There's like nowhere where it would even be close to rubbing. Now, right there, it looked like it might have, so I grinded down a little piece of the starter uh, solenoid, but it doesn't affect it. I honestly don't even think I needed to do that, but... I did it just in case it wasn't something I wanted to pull out later on if I did have to clearance it. Then, got to wire up the fan. That's about it down here. Let me get up top. Hold on. All right. Got the interior pretty much put back together. Just got to put the center console on. I went back to the OEM vinyl seats just so it looks a lot more uh, stock. If anybody has any idea on how to wire up or how to pick up a speedometer signal from the... 6R80 if it's possible without like a converter box or anything like that. Let me know, please That's the only thing I don't know. Yeah, I think I have to buy like a Dakota digital um, Piece and then it'll just basically wire into the box and then from the box into that Let me know on that if anybody has uh, any idea about that. Here's the stock shifter. It's gonna be park obviously reverse neutral drive and Then that's gonna be sport mode I haven't yet uh, wired up the paddle shifts. I want to get the car going first and then worry about that later. Um, I do have the graph to where you have to tap into the uh, tap into the trans into the uh, harness. But look, the that little stop bracket won't allow it to come out out further than that. That's that. I am gonna run the uh, cut my fucking nail a little while ago. I am gonna run the. Um, Paddle shifts to here. So I'm going to tap into the steering column, run them into here. This will be up since it's going to be my left hand. Other hand's going to be on the shifter, pretending like I'm shifting the transmission, but I'm not doing shit really. But this is going to be up and down. I might do up, down, or just up over here only, and then down over here only. That way I don't mix it up. Then another thing I was thinking is, how am I going to know what fucking gear I'm in? So if I'm in sport mode, let's say I'm in fourth gear, and I want to drop down gears... I got to get like something digital. Somebody knows about anything about that as well. Something that kind of shows you what gear you're in. Um, what else? I got my uh, little, well, I showed you guys that last time. The little uh, fuse relay, max fuse, whatever. Let me go up to the front again. So I was going to run a OEM S197. What is it? Like a 10 to 14 fan. I went and bought one. It was like 160 bucks. But it just wasn't going to fit. Like, it was going to hang way down past the uh, frame. Like, the radiator support. So, I just ran the same one I had. It works good. I ran the trans cooler in between there. You can see it. There's a trans cooler. Up and out of the way. Lines right there. Bam. And then they come out. Run from underneath the car. Now, that's another thing. I didn't I didn't uh, want to get a, a you know... Trans cooler fan only, just more things to wire. And I think it'll be fine right there. This fan pulls pretty fucking hard, so I think it'll be good. I've never had any overheating issues with it. I made like six passes back to back. Never went past like 200 degrees on it, so I think that'll be fine. Everything I wired outside, once again, I didn't want to tuck anything. I don't want to have to take these fenders off all the time, so that's all cool. I think it looks fine, man. It's it's like an OEM look, kind of, you can say. Not really, but I got to wire this shit in. This is a tack adapter for the RPM gauge. Got to wire this in. So I unplug this. So that'll go like that. Uh, computer right there. OEM uh, reservoir on there. <clears throat> I, man, I've, I've changed this setup so many times, man, because of uh, I just don't like the way it looks. And then it was hitting up here. But it's sturdy on there. It ain't going nowhere. What I did is I did. I mean, you can kind of see right here. I actually cut the fucking fan. To where this will sit closer and I can just mount this on here. I used to have like these little brackets right here. That shit look corny as fuck. So I actually mounted it straight onto the fan. It comes off with the fan. 
it clears everything. And then again, a lot of people ask me, I get this asked all the time, I don't know why, but what radiator do you run? AutoZone, warranty radiator I've had for 10 years, man. I mean, not this actual one, but the warranty I've had. I always get a new one. Uh, if you look at the S550 stock radiators, they are not probably thinner than this. I don't know. This one, for some reason, is a little thicker than all the other ones I've seen. A little bit, maybe like an eighth of an inch thicker, but it works. I've never had any issues with it. You are going to have to get this Ford Racing uh, cap because I've tried the OEM ones or like the AutoZone ones or whatever, and they just don't hold. They start leaking for whatever reason. Don't ask me why, but that's what I did. Um... 18 manifold my boy andres man that dude's a fucking beast he makes these little brackets to lock it out this is a stock not oh shit got a little bit of fuel right there this is a stock non-ported one um i'm gonna cut this tab off right here i want to run a cobra jet but i'm gonna cut this tab off right here <clears throat> and then he also makes which i need to paint i know these little brackets to where you can run the stock uh the engine cover, the Gen 2 engine cover on the uh, manifold right here. You just got to cut that tab off or cut here. I'd say cut that tab off better. You can run the stock uh, manifold cover on the Gen 2. That's what you're worried about, Licks. I mean, fuck it. I'm going to do it. If anybody's interested in getting those brackets or those, I think he's selling these for like Fuck, I don't know. I want to say could be more. Don't 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 quote me, but like fifty bucks for those, and then like twenty five bucks for those. I've seen those go for as much as like eighty dollars. That I don't think anyone makes yet. So that's uh something to think about. If you guys are interested in that, shoot me an email. Let me go over this AC thing one more time, real quick. This is a four cylinder uh accumulator. I want to say it's called. I'm sorry. Forget uh. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a four-cylinder one. The four-cylinder one faces forward. The V8 one from the Fox body goes around, and the compressor's over here. On the four-cylinder, the compressor's down here in the same location as the Coyote. This is a 100% stock from 1989 accumulator. It was still in good condition. This is the stock line for said accumulator. This is what the shop did. Cut from here. I also had the stock compressor lines from the Gen 2, which should be the same as the S197 Gen 1. Probably not the same on the F-150, but this is a stock line. This is a stock Coyote line. This is a stock box body line. Bam, that's where they made the, the uh, connection. Hooks up like stock. Same thing, this line here. Coming out of it, loops down right there. From a Coyote. This from a fox body this from a fox body stock you don't have to fuck with that one that one just goes straight back into the uh, firewall this is what they made me this line here connects down to the coyote one cut it right there and hooked it up like the coyote does i believe they connected it here as a matter of fact that's that's all, all the way up to here is coyote after this is custom this shit is useless if you, you do not need this this is a fucking eyesore i'm gonna get this taken off or something but you do not need this this comes from the this is from the coyote there's um i think i'm running out of time here but there is a uh, this is um they have wirings and all that depending on the control pack the new control pack which i ordered in 2019 has no provisions for ac nothing at all you're gonna have to wire this shit in by yourself once i figure that out i'll show you guys <clears throat> but useless i fill it through here leave the strainer valve on there whatever you want to call it the little tip in there leave it on there take this out fill it pop it back in serves like as a security measure low pressure switch one side is wired to the uh, ac panel so i use the stock controls the other one is wired directly to the ac compressor that's it simple as fuck obviously your fan is going to have to kick on when the ac is on because i have Usually what I did is I would let the car warm up before I started using the AC. That way the fans are on and they'll never shut off the whole time I have the AC. I did forget a few times. I'd leave the house, turn the AC on, and I would get a big fucking and it'd shoot out a fucking cloud of the Freon or pressure, whatever the fuck it is. So always make sure your fans are on or if you're going to use the AC all the time, make sure you wire it up to where once your fans kick on, the AC or once the AC kicks on, the fans kick on. That's it for now, man. I'll give you guys a better update.